They're the best riders in the world, so surely we should be doing exactly what they're doing, right? Not necessarily. In this video, we're going to go into what you can take away from the motorcycling elite to benefit you in your own riding, and why you shouldn't really be looking to carbon copy exactly how they ride. There's definitely something to be gained from studying their technique on a fundamental level. But there comes a point where going too deep into exactly what they're doing and trying to mimic that could bring you issues. For instance, watch any MotoGP rider and you'll see that, as you would expect, they're doing everything by the book on a fundamental level. Things like how they're initially applying the brakes, trailing them off into the corner, when they get back to the throttle, and how they move their bodies around from corner entry right through to corner exit. Aside from a little variation between riders and how they like to approach the corner themselves, these actions are textbook from a standpoint of giving the bike what it wants in order to be smooth and fast over a lap. But when you start to get a little deeper and more detailed into exactly what they're doing, it's not as easy to say whether that should be an approach you copy. When technique is dictated by machinery and tyres. One massive reason why is because the machinery and tyres they're riding on are worlds away from what you and I will ever ride, and much of the rider's approach is dictated by that equipment in a substantial way. This was highlighted a lot in the fantastic How I Ride series released by Motorsport Magazine, which I'll link down below, where they asked a number of different riders how they ride their machines and how that approach may have changed over the years. What became immediately apparent is that not only does each rider have their own way in which they like to find speed around the track, but that equipment changes can have a huge impact on their ability to do that. One instance where this was evident across all riders was when they talked about the changes they had to make to their riding style when moving from Bridgestone tyres to the Michelins back in 2016. On the Bridgestones, the front tyre in particular had massive grip, to the point where riders could be well over 55 degrees of lean and still braking mind-bogglingly hard. With the Michelins, it was the opposite, particularly in the beginning. The rear tyre was the strongest, and the front was comparatively weak when the brand was first reintroduced. So riders had to stop trailing so much brakes into the corner, and many riders now talk about getting all their braking done upright. Now, realistically, they're not doing that, but I suspect they mean they're getting all their hard braking done upright. The point is, 10 years ago you could look at riders in MotoGP and quite easily come to the conclusion that you need to trail massive amounts of braking effort into the corner to go fast, because that's what the very best in the world were doing, when in truth it was merely the tyres that they'd been given that were allowing them to do that, and it was the best way to run a fast lap. Then there's the difference between bikes. Jorge Lorenzo publicly said he didn't use the rear brake on his Yamaha, a bike he won three championship titles on. But on the Ducati, it was necessary to use a lot of rear brake to get the thing to turn in the early and middle part of the corner. This shows once again that we can't just point at a rider and say, he's doing this and he's fast, so he must be right. So what can we learn from MotoGP riders? Like I said, they'll be doing the basic fundamentals completely by the book. So in that respect, they serve as a great example of many of the things you would learn from any trusted teaching source. However, one of the biggest lessons I get from watching them ride and listening to their comments is the level of nuance that comes from each rider in terms of their approach. Here we have a bunch of riders that have the potential of winning races, but there are many visible differences to how they ride in terms of how they look on the bike and the approaches they take to each corner. This in itself is a good lesson to take away, because it should hopefully help you be a little more flexible with how you approach certain things, allowing you to stem confusion and get on with the job of being fast. I also like to see how what they say stacks up against what I know about riding, whether that's confirming a truth or quashing a myth. Every now and again you'll get these little gem comments where they get specific about what they're doing, and these insights can be invaluable to help you understand if you yourself are thinking in the right way. Then there's just the satisfaction of getting the lowdown on how the best in the world go about their business, something I personally find incredibly interesting. So in the end, there are a few things we can pick up from what these riders are doing. And the best thing you can do is put that evidence or their comments into the context of your own riding to see if it stacks up with how you think it should. What takeaways have you got from watching the best in the world do what they do? Tell us about it in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this video, then please hit the button and subscribe to the channel for more performance riding advice and guides moving forward. I'll see you in the next one.